Hello and welcome to episode 18 of the Physique Development Podcast, a podcast bringing you structured Q&As, deep dives on single topics, and inside looks at our team. Today's episode, we are going to start with a rapid Q&A. Then we're going to dive into some commonly asked questions about our new training app, the Physique Development Training Club, and also touch on some new exciting updates about our coaching staff, a couple of new coaches. So I'm going to hand it over right to Sue, and she's going to dive into the rapid Q&A section of this podcast. Hey guys. So one of the questions we got here was from someone named Helene and it was asking about vegetables to reduce bloating. So one thing I want to note here before I get into the specific vegetables is if you are eating a certain amount of fiber, you do need to make sure you're having enough water to digest it, to move through your GI tract. So just being aware of kind of the fiber intake that you're having and what that looks like. Um, when it comes to reducing bloating as a whole, and just looking out for your digestion, we do have a video on our YouTube channel talking about different different tips and tricks you can do without talking about supplements to help your digestion. And I'll just mention a few of those here. One is going to be making sure you're eating slow enough. The other is going to be making sure that your heart rate is coming back down to resting heart rate. If you're eating post-workout or in a stress situation, being able to take those de deep breaths. Um, another is making sure that you have enough water in total, but if you're drinking too much water during your meal, that can cause excess bloating. Um, throughout your meal. Um, also drinking through a straw can cause bloating for some people, as well as having like fizzy drinks um, or anything with carbonation can cause bloating there or too many artificial sweeteners. Not that artificial sweeteners are inherently bad. Some people do not to do well with them, myself included. So please do not think you need to get rid of every artificial sweetener in your cabinet. Just if you are having issues, possibly pulling those out, seeing how that sits with you. Um, and gum is another thing that can cause bloating. So just a few things for you to keep in mind. When it comes to fiber, we also have a whole podcast episode on that. That is episode six, talking about net carbs and fiber and what that looks like just for you to have some more information. But I do, of course, want to make this semi rapid in answering this question. But I did want to give you some excess resources if you are curious on this topic big time. Um, so definitely go check those out. But like I said, the big thing is making sure you're having enough water. When it comes to the recommended daily amount of fiber, we're looking at 10 to 14 grams per 1000 calories. So of course, different people can fall into different camps within that, but that's a great recommended daily amount, your RDA there. So when it comes to vegetables or different things I would recommend, ginger is a great one, whether it's fresh ground ginger, fresh grated ginger, um, or seasoning with ginger, ginger pills, um, they are all going to be extremely helpful for bloat and gas. Um, ginger contains a digestive enzyme called zygabane, which helps the body break down protein. Um, and then it just has a nice relaxing effect on your intestines as a whole. Um, other things, yogurt, just because it has great probiotics in there and being able to help you. Bananas or any potassium rich food can be very helpful. Spinach is extremely potassium rich. Um, and so it does squash and sweet potatoes have potassium and coconut water. Um, but it's something because of sodium, if you look at your sodium to potassium levels, um, if you don't have enough potassium, you can have a lot of that water bloat of that subcutaneous water um, sitting on your skin. Uh, are sitting under your skin, um, not on top of your skin. And then lemons can also be helpful, um, just being able to help within those digestive juices. That acidity can be extremely helpful. Um, so as you can see, not all of these are vegetables. We're talking about different fruits and different aspects here. Um, but avocados, again, another great source of potassium and antioxidant. Pumpkin, um, files right in there as well as cucumber um, and asparagus. Asparagus is a natural diuretic. So if you are having issues with bloat, it is a great option there. Now it is something for uh, vegetables. You also need to take into account what vegetables are helping or hurting you. So it's something that I had to realize that eating raw vegetables was hard on me um, and uh, different vegetables were just agitating my stomach like Brussels sprouts were. So I had to switch having shaved Brussels sprouts for me to be able to to utilize them a little bit better. Another thing to mention here is that um, some things that can cause bloat for you are going to be dairy, beans, cruciferous vegetables, stuff like that. We all have different things that are going to trigger that, but I wanted to run through vegetables that help reduce bloat or how to reduce bloat as a whole. Um, the next question here, and I'm going to pass this over to Alex, is can supplements make or break your gains or nutrition? And that was asked by Lauren. No, they cannot. Um 
Well, it depends, I, I suppose. And, and the the it depends factor of all this is that are you able to to get all of your vitamins and minerals uh, and, and essential fatty acids and um, all these different factors within your diet? If you can, then by all means, I, I do not think that that supplements are, are necessary for you. But with how busy um, everyone is and, and the just the plethora of, of vitamins and minerals that we need, as, as well as the essential fatty acids that I, I spoke on, um, um, it's going to be easier for you uh, from a to to supplement with these different things to have omega threes into your supplementation to have a a base multivitamin just to get you uh, at least a little bit covered from some of your your vitamin and mineral consumption. Maybe you need some adaptogens into your regiment to allow for cortisol control and and, and brain function and all these different factors. Um, so it really depends and how much you're wanting to optimize your overall health as well. Uh, and also budget plays a role in this too. So there's so many different components to this. I, I don't think that it's going to make or break you necessarily, but it is going to make things a whole hell of a lot easier to hit the essentials that you need from a dietary standpoint. Perfect. Um, and then Austin, macro timing and meal timing. And that was asked by Sam, just the importance of that or what that looks like. Yeah, the importance of macro timing and meal timing are going to play different roles, right, in your your everyday routine, within your performance in the gym, uh, with your recovery, things like that. And so the big thing is going to be the protein intake. So getting those four to five even protein feedings throughout the day, somewhere around 20 to 30 grams per protein feeding. If you're a larger individual, a little bit more probably wouldn't hurt. Um, and being somewhere between that 0.8 to 1.6 to 2 grams per pound of protein intake. On, there's obviously a higher threshold there, um, but they have done research upwards of 3 grams per pound and seen no harmful effects, be it that you don't have any metabolic disorders or kidney dysfunction or anything like that. So as always, always check with your physician, always get pre-approved as far as that stuff goes, but also know there has been a lot of research on this subject and they have found little drawback to zero drawback in a higher protein intake. So as far as meal timing goes, this is a probably, that's probably the biggest factor. And they're going to get into things like carbs and fats, obviously. And our biggest rule of thumb with clients is really just structuring that carb intake more around that peri workout window, trying to get those carbohydrates in there during the workout or peri workout window. So peri just meaning around. So pre intra or post is a really great way to kind of spread out your carb intake. And, and with clients, we do have percentages of that intake. Um, and I'll let these guys, I forget the exact percentages. It's, it's uh, slipping my mind, but I don't even think that's important right now as much as just like get most of your carbs in, like I would say get 80%, 60 to, uh, 60 to 80%, probably around your workout window. Um, and you can spread out the other, you know, uh, across the other meals and then um, having a good you know, split of fat intake in those meals that you aren't getting those carbohydrates. Um, so that can definitely help as well. And on days that you're not training, you can have a little bit more even split of those nutrients to help with digestion, help also with uh, managing blood sugar and keeping you more satiated longer because more mixed meals are going to help digestion time or digestion rate, allowing food to move a bit slower through your digestive tract, allowing you to stay fuller or more full rather. Uh, for a longer duration of time. And I forgot what else I was going to say there. So um, <laughs> that's all I had on meal timing, I think. And I did want to also mention before Alex, <laughs> or Alex speaks here, um, in terms of gut and, and digestion, it kind of pairs well with what Sue said, with also what Alex was talking about. And I know um, I've seen within the research as well that fish oil and those good omega, omega-3 fatty acids can help uh, with bloating and gut inflammation as well. So uh, fish oil is just a good all around supplement to take care of yourself, but it also can play on that question number one, as far as kind of digestive issues and bloating and stuff like that, especially if it's inflammation related. Yeah. And the only thing I was going to add for Austin's uh, question in terms of uh, meal timing is that the greater deficit that you're in from like a fat loss phase, the the more important it becomes, the greater in intensity that you're taking like a growth phase or a, a caloric surplus, the less necessary it becomes as you're going to have an abundance of glycogen stores in a 
in a surplus and, and you're not going to necessarily need this abundance of, of carbohydrates pre-workout as you've been overfeeding, um, you know, throughout your entire day to day, month to month, uh, approach in that time frame. Whereas in a deficit, you may be in the later stages of a contest prep or something of that nature, where that pre-workout meal is, is a huge determinant of the quality of your training session, um, comparatively to not taking that in consideration and probably having some, some poor performance at from time to time. Yeah, yeah, that was an excellent Sorry, point there. <laughs> uh, I was going to mention something along the same vein as Alex is that, yes, when you're in a deficit, it does make you have to be a little bit more on top of it just for your ability for recovery, which also is going to aid in fat loss and or muscle growth. Um, but then the other aspect here is you want to think about what it looks like for your life. It's not something that um, I want clients necessarily stressing about. I have to have this exact percentage before my pre-workout or it doesn't even matter anymore. We're always looking for the net positive of, okay, how can I make myself a little bit better here? How can I optimize things a little bit better here? And how can I make sure the structure fits into my life so it's doable? You don't need to slam a shake right after you work out in order to get the gains that you need. And the more stressed you are about your nutrition, honestly, the worse it's going to go. Because when it comes to nutrition and when it comes to digestion, since we're talking about this, when you're in that fight or flight, when you're stressed about something, it pulls the blood away from your stomach to focus on, okay, I need to run away from this bear, or I need to focus on this stress, or I need to lift this weight. And so it's something that if you're constantly stressed about food, it can actually make your digestion a lot worse. And then it can not matter as much as meal timing if your digestion is just shot all of the time. So they are all interrelated. And I think it's an important thing to note. Um, and then Austin, if you did want to touch on that a little bit more. Yeah, I think context matters here a lot, right? So the more advanced the, the, the person, the more sort of outlandish and higher achieving their goals are, whether that be a competing goal or just an avid gym goer wanting to go to the gym and get the most out of their their results um, to an individual that just wants to feel and perform and recover better. That's going to sort of that continuum of uh, giving a shit rather about this meal timing thing is a big thing because the big thing is going to be the protein intake that we talked about at the beginning. That is one of those things where protein can't really be outside of our muscle tissue. Protein can't not be stored in our body, it has no storage reservoir to sort of accumulate for us to sort of tap into later outside of our muscle tissue, which we don't necessarily wanna break that down, right? That's hard earned, we work so hard to earn it, why let it go um, by the wayside? And that's why there's a lot of protective mechanisms where that's the last resort for us. Um, but with things like carbohydrates and fats, there are those reservoirs as well. And again, as Alex was saying, you know, if you're around maintenance or maybe even into a little bit of a surplus, this does matter less and less because we have those reservoirs rather i'll just keep with the same analogy to kind of pull from throughout that time and and how you know if, whenever we need it um, but the deeper you get into a deficit that context does start to matter more and more and that's where things do get a little bit more individualized and where we get with our competitors or our more serious clients who are going towards those bigger goals um or photo shoot or something like that so that's really all i just wanted to touch on there um but I do also cover this in uh, my book, Science of Strength Training in the nutrition section. So uh, if you guys wanna check that out, um, that is now for pre-order in the US on Amazon. If you're in the UK, it, it, you can order it. Um, so that is, there is a peri-workout section in that book in the nutrition section. So I do talk about that pretty extensively within the l latest research of things as well. And very much so about to the anatomy of things as the nutrition yeah. is just one small part of it. So definitely yeah. recommend picking that up. That is a phenomenal textbook. I know I always get questions from clients or just from people on Instagram asking like what other resources I would go to for learning. And that is now going to be a top recommendation from me. So I'm very excited to have that to recommend to people. Um, the next question here is from Leanne and it's what are some healthy carbs to eat on the go? I need to increase my calories. Calories. Um, so with this, I I'm very um, well adapt or well 
in line with this because I do need a lot of carbs in place right now and just being able to get them down and have some denser carb options as well for increasing food. So some great options, especially on the go, rice cakes, any flavor, size, whatever, especially if you're looking for a denser rice cake, a lot of the more natural brands, I think it's like Lundergan Farms or something, um, are much more dense um, calorically wise than just a Quaker rice cake there. Um, Fruit. So bananas and apples are great because they come in their own skin. So you don't need to have as much protectant for them. So um, I'll also include kiwis on that. Um, And then grapes, just because those are going to be easy to transport, Um, but great bang for your buck, lots of nutrients and vitamins there as well. Um, And oranges. Uh, Another one is going to be dried fruit. So um, dried mango is one of my favorites. Um, I know it's not one of Alex's. He's not a mango fan. So you guys can DM him and roast him for that. Um, But when you are looking at dried fruit, I would recommend to look at the ingredients to make sure that it just says that it's the dried fruit. We don't need anything extra added in there. Trust me, it is tasty enough. I also have some dried apricots um, and different things like that. Um, Then another option here is going to be carb powders. So one that we commonly recommend is called Mike's Mix. You can get it on Amazon. Um, And then another one is going to be Carbolin. And those are going to just be super easy to mix into any drink to add in some extra carbs. Other options that are already pre-made are going to be Gatorades. Obviously not a Gatorade Zero as we want the carbs in there. So a a normal Gatorade. Um, And then and also things like orange juices or fruit juices are going to have a good pack um, or a punch there um, for carbs. Uh, so any other ones, big ones that I'm mit- missing for easy on the go carbs? I don't think so. Oh, dates. Dates are a great one as well. Um, very big pack for your punch for something small. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I mean, you got sugar candies as well. You've got sour strips. You've got all that kind of stuff too. I mean, it's not the best, but it's it's going (laughs) to taste the (laughs) highest. (laughs) It's going to hit your your carb marker. Yeah, and I want to mention one thing here that I know. I know we talked about kind of all these subjects separately before on the podcast and kind of putting it all together here. But um, I was asked this by a client the other day uh, who does have a high carb intake and. You know, he, he's got some big goals where he's wanting to put on a lot of muscle tissue, but he's a very active individual, works in construction. And so he's very, very, very active. And it's hard if you guys are, have a very physically active job, it's hard to kind of, then you have a goal of putting on muscle and putting on, putting on some mass. Like it's hard to keep up with that metabolism, right? It's hard to keep up and keep enough food in, in there to, to actually make some sust- substantial gains. And so he was asking, you know, is it, is it super important that all of these carbohydrates are from quote unquote clean sources? And I'd love to kind of talk, dive into that, talk about that really quick with all of us, um, and kind of our experience here. But, you know, I've been on both ends of the spectrum here, as far as like being the cleanest eater you could imagine to being like the dirtiest eater you can imagine. Right. Obviously we're not, we're not wanting to label foods clean and dirty necessarily, but there are foods that do have more nutrient dense sources in terms of its nutrient profile relative to its caloric um, amount. And there are healthier foods than others, right? We can kind of pinpoint the fact that, uh, you know, foods that are normally in a salad are going to be more nutrient dense and full of more nutrients than a ding dong or a Twinkie or something like that, right? Calorically, we can play the calorie battle all we want, but there is a nutrient difference, right? We are filling those are ticking those boxes of minerals and vi- vitamins and minerals and, and things like that within the salad over a ding dong, right? So um, there's that component of things, but it's important that you understand like the higher your carb intake also relative to the lower your carb intake, it matters, right? It's contextual to what type of carbs you can sort of make up that entire carb intake with, right? So if you have a lower carb intake, let's say, the more lower calorie and lower carb, the more important that nutrient timing is, as we talked about earlier, but also the more important it is for you to get very, very, very nutrient dense foods, right? Because the lower calorie you are, the more at risk you are for nutrient deficiencies. You have less, you have less shots on goal, right? To, to sort of make those up within the foods that you're eating. And, you know, opposite to that, the higher carb intake you have or higher calorie intake you have, you have more shots on goal. You have more food that you're eating and consuming on a daily basis. And to where 
if you make up the really, really high calorie or really high carb intake or with foods that are solely just based off of nutrient density, you can kind of get hung up on, well, I get halfway there and I'm just stuffed. I can't fit any more food in. And the hack here is, okay, I know I had this conversation with the client. Okay, that's great. And it is great that we're having really nutrient dense foods. I'm really proud of that. But you have to keep in mind too that like there's just a point where we have to sort of have the cereals. We have to have those simple sugars to sort of hack that point of satiation mixed with calories, mixed with carbs and go that route, right? So if the 80% of your diet, let's say, is, is really nutrient dense, man, it's not that 20% that's going to have those adverse effects, right? And I think it's one of those things where it's a real blanket statement of refined sugars are terrible, all processed food is, you know, terrible and whatever else. And it's, again, context matters. So that's in relation to if that's all you're eating, I would fully agree with that statement. It's probably not the best thing to put in your body. It's not going to fuel you. It's not going to give you vitamins and minerals that you need to stay healthy, right? But if 80% of your calorie intake is nutrient dense and full of vitamins and minerals and good, healthy foods, fibers, and things like that, well, damn, who's to say that we can't have some refined sugar? You know, it's not usually these individuals who are sort of the culprits of that blanket statement anyway. So, um, moral of that story is essentially like it's okay if your diet is made up of majority healthy foods and you're you know giving effort towards that have yourself some some simple refined sugars like that's okay you can have those and you're not going to be unhealthy and you're probably honest going to be better off from a performance and recovery perspective as well so um, if you are someone with a higher metabolism or a faster metabolism however you want to kind of label that or you're just an incredibly active person who's trying to put on some muscle, those are some good tips for you because male or female, this happens and we see it with our clients all the time. Yeah, awesome. Well, then we will go into some information about the app and then we'll wrap it up with the new coaches and I'll give a little bit of a bio on each of them um, to make sure that you know how kick-ass these coaches are. And you guys have probably already listened to, if you have not, their episodes on the podcast. So if you haven't, they're going to be the two episodes prior to this one. Yeah. And so you'll be able to get to know a little bit more of them, hear them talk, hear their stories um, as well. But hopefully the little bios I give you entice you to go listen to that if you have not already. So what what questions, what were the most asked questions about the, about the app? Some of the questions here um, was asking if it is individualized or not. Okay, well, um, it's as individualized as it can be for a product or programming that is sort of pre-written for you, right? So I think individualized gets a weird association these days. Like it's not some thrown together reps and sets that make no sense towards a goal, right? It's it's well thought out and we've sat down and, and programmed this uh, programming out to best match the goals of the individual, right? This is kind of the, the play on why there's a different option for males and females is they typically have different goals. You know, males typically want to bring up their upper bodies, uh, you know, chest, delts, arms, things like that, back, bigger lats relative to what women need or want or desire, and maybe more focus on like quads and stuff like that relative to like straight glute training, right? Or just bringing up your delts and your glutes and, and stuff that females typically more on average want to bring up. So I think individualized, it's individualized to a specific goal and it's going to drive you in a place where you're going to better reach that goal and faster with more intelligent programming but it's not like taking you by hand getting a layout of your gym situation like we do with clients right the difference here with like clients we get them to give us an, a, an idea of their gym space they send us photos videos and stuff so we can see their gym space and program specifically for that gym space. And we're not doing that necessarily for the app, but we're doing all that we can with the experience and uh, information we've gathered throughout our you know, combined forever years of coaching by this point and using that information to not just slap reps and sets together with random exercises, but to create a well-rounded, well-thought-out program design based off the goal that you have. So if however you want to label individualized here, 
that's sort of what that is. And that is the difference between probably the, the difference between the individualized coaching with that we have with our one-on-one clients versus a well thought out progressed driven training towards a goal within the app. Do you guys have any more to add there? No, I think that was the the best explanation we could get for it, honestly. Yeah, and it also covers one of the other questions, which was what's the difference between the male and the female side of things? And like Austin stated, it's just based on the muscle groups that typically males and females want to be able to grow, improve on, or work on. The other thing I'll mention within this when it comes to our personalized one-on-one coaching, not only are we seeing your gym, we're getting feedback of that. You're having check-ins weekly where we're looking at your body, seeing what needs to be changed, knowing what that volume allocation looks like. So like Austin said, this is as personalized and as goal driven towards you as possible because you're able to tell us your goal. And then we're able to give you what that looks like within programming without the cost of one-on-one coaching. But there is a big difference there within what we're offering. So the other question here was, did a certain PD coach or coaches design the workouts? And I want to be able to give praise where praise is due. Alex and Austin um, went to a remote cabin in the middle of nowhere and programmed their ever-loving asses off. Um, that so, sounds a lot cooler than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I would give you the, the benefit of the doubt with the explanation I there. <laughs> um, so they definitely put in the freaking work for this. Um, and I want to give credit where credit's due there and make sure that they're highlighted because they are phenomenal programmers. They're people that I've trusted for a long time to do my own programming for me and where I've learned a lot of my programming as well. And they were definitely the right men for this job and have absolutely killed it. So if you guys want to add anything within the programming, you can, but I did want to give you that, that shout out and, um, the explanation there. Uh, I mean, what I'll add is, is that the programming is very good. I, I, I think that this is an absolute steal in terms of there's there's so many coaches that are going to be sending out um, Word documents that are just programs that you just keep running. And, and then you have to like notify your coach of like, dude, I've been using this training program for like 16 weeks. Can we change things? And they're like, oh, yeah. And then they just send you another Word document that has nothing that is applicable, applicable, applicable to <laughs> you. And this is literally going to be $35 and it is going to be a progression and it's going to be individualized to the extent in which we just discussed. I mean, it, it literally beats a majority of of other coaches, if you will, um, for thirty five bucks, dude. I have no idea. I mean, it's, <laughs> that's the the most honest response I can give to anyone. That's very honest, but very <laughs> true. Um, so, I'll, another one of the questions was just kind of what is featured within the this app. What does that look like? So, we have some pretty cool features in here. Um, and with this being a, a beta launch, it's also something where we're getting feedback, we're seeing what things need to be improved on, and then being able to give you the most kick ass product for that thirty five dollars. So. Um, Um, Within the PD training club, some different things that you get is you're getting that training that is going to be freaking good training. Um, It's going to also be periodized. It's going to make sense. It's not just throwing volume at a wall so that you tag us and say, oh my gosh, I'm dead. You might tag us and say that, and you might be a little bit angry at some of the programming. And again, you can be angry at Alex and Austin for that. Um, But it is something where there's a point to all of it. There is a method to the madness. And if you've followed us for any length of time, you understand what I mean by that. There is a, it's not just, oh, I'm going to write this training and then I'm going to write this training. It's I'm writing this training. And then the next training, I have that training in mind. And a really, really cool thing about this app that is one of my favorite parts is it takes the guesswork out of things. A lot of apps that we see on the market are showing like you can do all these different programs in it, or here's programming, um, like follow this person's programming, whatever it may be. there's a lot of that on the market. What there isn't is taking the decision or the guesswork out. So it's something that you take an initial assess assessment, let us know your goals, what you're trying to accomplish. You are assigned a, a training. After you finish each training block, you take another short assessment. It's not like you're taking hours out of your day. You're taking a short assessment to let us know where you need to go next. So it makes sense. You don't have to sit there and be like, well, um, I'm going to do this program next. And then I I don't know about this one. Does this make sense to follow this? 
it'll all make sense. You don't have to think about that aspect anymore. And then ones that are going to be um, still very cool, but that one I think is one of the coolest is it's going to have videos of each and every exercise that we have really taken time and money to pour into having really quality exercise videos here, explanations as well, not just showing you the exercise, but walking you through the exercise, what we're doing, common mistakes, helpful cues there. Also has a step-by-step -step written out for each exercise explaining how to do it. If you don't want to watch the video or if you watched it and you want to read it as well, just to make space for different types of um retention there for different people. Um, it also has your reps, your reps, your sets on there, and you can track your reps and sets and see what weight you're doing and how you're improving. It also has the rest programmed in there as well as tempo. And then there's a rest timer in there. So you can track your workouts and track your rest periods as you're going through your workouts. So that is also extremely cool, extremely awesome. You have your own profile in there where you're able to see how much weight you've lift. You're able to like favorite exercises. So you're able to see all oh, these are my favorite exercises or see the whole library of exercises and to be able to go through that as well. Um, so there's a lot of things I might've missed some. So Alex or Austin, you can pick up. I was just really passionate about those, those few that I wanted to get out there. Yeah, I'll pull out of some of those. So the, the step-by-step -step with the exercise tutorials too, is also another feature of that is, you know, we've had clients and, and folks in the past who've run our programs who are, are hearing impaired. Um, so it does help those individuals as well. So if you know them or you are one yourself, we do have those step-by-steps there for you. If you are a hearing impaired individual to obviously get an idea of that movement via watching the video, but you can also read uh, the text step-by-step -step on what exactly kind of we're talking about in the video there right within the app. And so as well with the progress tracking, you can, obviously you're entering in your weights uh, for the amount of, you know, amount of load that you did for the given rep range. But for each exercise, the, the app itself actually stores this information for you. So you can go in and, and see what you did on April 5th session when you did lying leg curl. Like what was my last week's weight? And the app does that for you. It'll tell you each date that you did that movement and you can kind of check, okay, was this this rep range or was it a different rep range? What what load did I use? And so it's really keeping track of that logbook for you digitally right there on your phone, which is really, really cool. Um, and then as far as like the program design part of it, a big part, a big, a big thing we wanted to do with this app and this offer for you guys was put together something that what we saw was missing. And that's a common thread with what we try and do within physique development is like, how can we make this a better space? How can we do something that other people maybe aren't doing yet, or maybe are falling short on in our eyes? And it's not a decrement to anyone else as much as just something that we are passionate about trying to fill a gap, right? Um, there is a large gap in terms of getting quality, well-programmed, -program programmed, progressed, sort of no-nonsense program design with goals in mind that also does those progressions for you over time based off a goal that you have, right? And so this app in a large way, especially the, the full offered version that we come out with very, very soon uh, in our public launch or public release of this app is going to be, again, as, as Sue was touching on, like you take, in, you take these assessments, you we are keeping track and it's built out to where the app is responding in real time to what you're saying, what you're putting in those assessments. You know, if you have a goal of, of building muscle, that's going to be noted when you answer those questions and it's going to trigger things to happen, right? And that the programming has been set up and programmed out and well, well thought out months and months and months in advance by us so that depending on when you start or no matter when you start, you based off of the, the answers you're giving to these assessments, you're going to be, you're going to know where to go. You're going to be putting into the right training program time and time again. So after you go up into or from the foundational phase, you'll go into like phase one or you'll on the assessment, you'll say, okay, I want to continue to build muscle here. Okay. Well, that'll trigger you to be put into phase one of our muscle building trajectory, our muscle building journey, if you will. And that programming is going to be again, programmed and individualized towards that goal that you have, right? It's going to be made for that specific goal within the reps, the sets, the rest periods, the way it's progressed and the way that stimulus has progressed over time. It's not just 
And again, like there are other apps on the market, your favorite influencers, workouts, you kind of follow along on a daily basis. We knew we didn't want to create another app like that. And then there are apps as well who you can log in and get access to hundreds of, of programs, but the decision-making process is still on you. We didn't want that either. We wanted an app that sort of took that component of well thought out program design that progresses itself over time, but give you the tools basically to run through that at your own pace, but it's programmed out in a way where you don't have to make those decisions on your own. You're not alone in that process, right? We're there with you asking you specific questions, steering you in the right direction. And the coolest part I think to this is we have basically two ways that you can engage with the app. That's the one that we'd recommend. That's the one we really built it for that, where you're getting in there and not having to make a ton of decisions on your own. But if you're an individual who kind of goes along the track of like, okay, I'll let you guys sort of make some decisions for me along the way. And maybe I reach a point where I feel comfortable. I feel advanced enough to where I'd like to take a step out of the trajectory that we sort of put you on. You have that autonomy. You have the ability to, to remove yourself from that track, from that journey and switch programs at any time, but understand that it's built out first and foremost to take you through that journey already. It's, it's, it's programmed out to where you're not having to make those decisions, but also understand that if you are an individual who doesn't necessarily want that feature, but you still want our programming that is progressed and, and driven towards that goal that you have, then that autonomy is still there for you. You still have that. You have the ability to make that decision for yourself, right? So we can either hold your hand throughout the process, or you can sort of take the reins on your own while still following our programming. Right. So those are very, very cool features of the app that we're very, very, very excited about. Um, and at the end of the day, like this is not your your favorite influencers app. This is not an app where you're just going to get access to hundreds and hundreds of programs. This is an app that was really designed to fill the whole, fill the gap in your life of the questions you have around programming. Like, I don't know wh what to do now and I don't know where to go next. Those are always the issues. And so we've created an app that basically answers those questions for you. That way, as soon as you walk into the gym, open the app and you know exactly what you're supposed to do and, and where you're going to be going next in the next phase. Now we could still be your favorite people on Instagram for sure, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, that, that's a bonus, I think. <laughs> um, and just some quick answers here. Someone asked if you needed gym access. And as of right now, you do need gym access. As we grow, we do want to be able to provide limited or home access um, for the app. Another one was if it works with the Android and it is in the Google store as well. Um, within this beta group, we'll really find out none of the three of us own an Android. So we can't specifically say how well the interface is from personal experience. But that's another reason for the beta group. And we already know that we have some beta group users in there that are Android users. So we will have an answer and we'll have that all vetted out by the time it launches in June. Another one was asking about um, the nutrition guidance or if there was going to be nutrition guidance. And we built out a macro calculator for you in there. So there will not be someone setting your macros, telling you what to eat, revising your meals, anything like that. That is more towards our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, but there will be a macro calculator because we did want to provide some sort of nutritional guidance in there. So um, Alex, do you have anything to say on the app or should we go ahead and introduce the coaches? Coaches. All right. So if you are following along us on Instagram, you would have already seen actually 30 minutes ago went live on the physique development Instagram um, for announcing the new coaches. And like Alex said, they do have a podcast, um, each of them that um, is both were phenomenal. So I was very, very happy with those. Um, but introduction here for two new PD coaches. Can I get a drum roll or excitement? I don't know the button. <laughs> I'll Try give one. a chance. That works. Not the right one, but close. <laughs> um, so <laughs> number one of the new coaches is going to be Maggie. She is a registered dietitian and is passionate about teaching her clients how to feel good from the inside out. Maggie's desire to learn about nutrition and fitness and truly help people understand their bodies and health began shortly after her mom had a heart attack and was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. From that moment on, she has made it her life goal to help individuals learn about food as a means of fuel for living their best life. 
Maggi earned a bachelor's degree in public health from the University of Louisville, a master's degree in nutrition science from Indiana University, and completed her dietetic internship at the University of Kentucky Hospital. Um, Kaylee was born and raised in Tucson, Arizona. She studied psychology physiology, wow, and psychology at the University of Arizona and dance throughout her entire life. Dance provided structure and accountability, long-term relationships and friendships, um, a safe place and a great outlet. Kaylee then pursued a personal training certification through NASA and started to seek education through sources she knew and trusted. The more she learned, the more her passion for fitness grew. Through proper strength training and a vegan diet, uh, she realized she had the ability to help others create sustainable change in order to live a life they truly love while becoming the best versions of themselves. So with that, um, as I just said, Kaylee is vegan, but she is also gluten-free. And then Maggie is vegetarian, which it brings another um, side to our coaching as none of our coaches on staff currently had followed those diets. Um, Charlotte was pescatarian for multiple years, but we do want to be able to make space for as many clients and types of living that people have in place. Um, so that is something that's very exciting to have it, um, have that resource there. So if you're interested in working with either of them or anyone on the PD staff, in the show notes will be the link to inquire, as well as the link is on our website, the physique development Instagram, and then in all of our bios on our Instagram as well. So many, many places you can inquire to work with them. But we are super jazzed up for these new coaches um, and just for the growth of physique development as we continue to innovate, as we continue to grow um, and just continue to provide resources. It's something that we are extremely passionate about. We want to be the person you think of when you're like, I want to know something about fitness, whether it's nutrition, training, whatever it may be, knowing that you can go to our Instagram profiles, you can go to our YouTube, you can go to our website, you can go to any of the coaches and you can find an answer to your question because we have the science-based, evidence-based questions, and we have it in an easy, digestible way. So super jazzed if you can't tell already. Um, but yeah, welcome to the team. Welcome, guys. Excited for you. Oh, Damn. we found the drum roll. That was, a, that was a really bad time to do that. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's for um, comedy, I guess. Yes. So that made it sound like Sue was joking, but she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> jokes on jokes. <laughs> I can just clank this entire board and see what happens. <laughs> I think it's what electronic music is this, these days anyways. So. Basically. <laughs> Basically. Okay. But yeah, no, I'm super excited to have both of them on the team. I think that they're going to be incredible additions. They've already got uh, a little bit of a client roster rolling. And I think that the, they're just going to be a fantastic addition. They're going to fill some some gaps and, and voids that we had on, on staff prior to them coming on board. Uh, and they're going to fit the culture uh, really, really well. I, I think that they only add positive energy to the, the team as a whole. And I think that from a just relationship perspective with the rest of the team is is going to be a, a seamless fit. Yeah. I mean, we've in, already in, in our conversations and work together, they're, they're very smart individuals um, with coaching experience, working with individuals, um, working them through not only nutrition, but some training stuff as well. So very, very, very excited for them and going to be great assets uh, to the team and, and to those who are wanting to dive in and, and work with these guys. So very, very excited as well. Perfect. Well, thanks for joining us today on this podcast. If you have any other questions related to the app, you can email admin at physiquedevelopment.com or we've been putting question boxes. Our DMs are also open for that. So please ask the questions. We want to get you the answers, but we're excited to have the app in your hands. Um, and, and if you want to inquire with those coaches, again, that's in the show notes. So we'll catch you on the next episode and thanks for listening. Last thing before you go, <laughs> physiquedevelopment.app is the is the page where you can go learn more about the app so physique development.app you can go learn more about the app uh, we'll constantly be updating that page so you can continue to learn more or join the list to be notified about our live launch that we'll be doing here in the next couple of months and also the thing that we did mention in the middle uh, i did want to mention as well to end this podcast out we haven't talked about it on the podcast before but I did write a book and I haven't really talked much about it. And I <laughs> I feel remiss not to at least mention something here um, as it is starting to come out and be released into the world. And so thank you guys so much if you guys have already bought the book. If you haven't, you can search Science of Strength Training on Amazon and it will pop up. Um, so it's already released in the UK uh, and parts of Europe. But if you are in the US, as most of you are, uh, it's 
on pre-order. So you can go pre-order it. It is $20 over 200 pages filled with everything you need to know about the science of strength training, a really good entry point for you guys, whether you're an early on PT uh, personal trainer or just an avid gym goer wanting to learn more. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention something, but we'll let you go this time for real. So thank you guys for listening and see you in the next one.